Hello everybody. Today we'll be creating a new app that will work for other WWDC 2024 stuff. But before doing that, we actually have to implement a photo picker. This photo speaker we will be adding multiple images, saving it to our local storage and then fetching them asynchronously. We're going to be using a bunch of concurrency involving actors, task groups and continuations. Let's begin introducing our app. We're doing a new one. I was actually going to start with a WWDC 2024 a new extension. But when I was preparing the project, turns out there's a lot of stuff that I hadn't covered and also had to review with regards to concurrency. So it seemed like a good idea to just make a video out of it. So we created a new app, one to just allow the user to create journal entries. So the app is aptly named um, journal. The model for now is just journal. It has an ID and text. We have a journal service. This service just deals with saving and retrieving the data. So we save the journals, we retrieve it, and then we just publish it through a publisher, view models, observe it, and publish it to the view, nothing new there. We have a file URL for our folder. So we do it with file manager, default.urls, we get the documents directory, and that's where we save our journals. Our journals, I don't know if I highlighted it here, are codable. And thanks to that, we can encode them and write them to a file as data. And likewise, because it's codable, we can also decode it. And when we retrieve the data, we get the data from that same file and we get our journals. All right, that's about it. We have our list where we display the journals, nothing else. We can add them to a button and in our view model, that's where we control it. We fetch the journals, we listen to the publisher where we get all of our updates and that's pretty much it. Nothing new. Let's run it and see it in action. So we have our app here, your journey. When we tap on the plus icon, we create a journal entry. Once we click on it, we should be able to go to the entry, which is what we're going to do right now. Gonna have our view model. Be an observable object. And for now, let's not do anything else here. Oh, except the initializer. So because we're gonna have a journal entry, we want that journal. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Also create our view. And we want to initiate our view, not with the view model, but with the journal. And here's where we will actually initialize it. With the journal. And in our journal list, we already have that inside of a navigation stack. That way we can navigate there. We are going to add a navigation destination. And it will take us to a journal and tribute. All we have to do is add the navigation link here. And we add the value, which is going to be our, yeah, we have the journal. And that's it. A reminder. We don't need to specify the view because navigation link will send this value and it will be caught by the navigation stack given that we added the modifier for the navigation destination. Nothing should have changed here. It's just, we're just gonna confirm that we can navigate to our journal entry view. Good, and we have our back button. That's pretty much what we want. Now let's add more stuff to our journal entry. So we're gonna have two things. On the right, we're gonna have, let me show the app. We now need to populate our journal entry. What we're going to do is divide it in two sections. One is the left where we're going to have the text about the entry. We're not going to modify that in this video. We're going to focus on the right side. What are we going to have there? The photos. The user will add the photos there. 
from their photo library will not enable camera yet in this video. This is pretty much all that we're going to do with the left side. And here's where we have our photos uh, content. Now, why do I special specify it as content? It's because the photos can have two states. One is displaying photos and the other one is loading since we are going to be retrieving the photos from our local storage. And it can have two things. It will either be loading or it will have content. And it will come in the form of UI image. And this one will be published. And we'll start loading. So is our content if our content is loading, easy. We just have a progress indicator, a progress view in the center. And if not, we have here our content with images. And uh, let's not do it inside of the um, switch. It's going to get messy. Instead, we're going to create a function. See, can we build? Okay, we can. For now, nothing will change. We will always be in this uh, loading state. We will not see the photos. Let's see. Go here and notice we're loading. Now, let's add some text here so we can actually see something. So, we will return the text only if the journal text is not empty. Now, how are we going to pick photos from the library? We could implement a PHP picker. I think it's PHP picker. View controller for the photos, but we can use a relatively new Swift UI view to pick photos by importing photos UI. We do not require anything. We actually don't even require permission. The view will deal with all of that. We're, we're not creating anything new. It's called photos picker. So this is a view. We can pass the selection. So our view model will have to have that. Let me see a photo speaker item. And something's not, oh yeah, this is not letting it fail. You can also select video. So this has another initializer, which is matching. We just want the images. And we need the content. I think this is like a button. So we'll just say add photos. And there's one more thing where we cannot build. It's here. There we go. Oh, Swift UI, that was one. And we're good. Let's let's see what happens. Let's see our photo speaker in action. We will not see the selected images, but at least we'll be able. Oh, it's loading. 
that's right we need to actually change it so first we need to prepare our data structure so we will have images it will be an array of strings why because here what we're doing is storing the the name of the images you'll see how we'll transform the later to urls and data and let's dig deeper into our, our view model okay so first we're gonna fetch the already stored photos And we will do it async. Actually, let's not do it async and see what happens. And here we will retrieve the photos from, from our journal, right? So what are we going to do after this? Well, we need to fetch the photos from storage. For that, we need a new service. We already have a service for the journals in our to retrieve and save our journal. So we need another service to retrieve and save photos. So we'll have three methods. One is to initialize. Another one is to save the data of an image. with a name, this can throw, and the other one will be to get the URL of an image given the name, and that's what we're gonna pass from the view model. And since we're going to be saving all of the photos, I don't want them to be spread in the user's document directory. I want to have our own directory of photos inside of the documents directory. That is. The first method we're going to invent is to initialize the directory. We'll be calling this up on app starter. And there's another flag that I can set here, which is true because I am creating a directory here. So first thing, we will create a directory if it doesn't exist. So the first thing that I have to do is ask my file manager if this file already exists. So if it doesn't exist, create it. If it already exists, then I don't care anything else and i'll just store my url here in the directory url now if it doesn't exist that's where that's why i encase this inside of a do let's actually have the catch already let me just print an error Okay, that's our initialize. So first, let's call it. We'll go to our journals app. We're already initializing. We're already doing some initialization in our journal app. So that in it, this is the first thing that's gonna call. This is the equivalent of you adding uh, stuff in the app, delegating the launch application. Here, we're gonna call the photo service adapter. Not that the share. And we'll initialize. Now that I realize it there's also another thing i shouldn't have been able to initialize this there the app shouldn't be able we have a we are using the single tone pattern here everybody's going to access the service to the through the shared variable so we'll initialize here this was this was create our directory and store that url before any of the other classes can use it 
we're going to save an image. We're going to get the data and the name, right? First off, we start with the directory URL. We need that one. If not, we want, honestly, we want this to crash. There's not much we can do and the user won't be able to save images. Pretty much our app will be useless. The file URL, the new photo we're going to be saving, is going to be pretty much the same as how we created the directory. With file URL with path relative to, we're going to add here the name that was passing the parameter and relative to the directory URL. Okay, that's method, the URL. So again, we're just getting the name and we're gonna do pretty much this part. That way, only this service knows the directory of the URL. All the, one, all the other ones that are using us, is just, they just handle the name of the image, which is part of the model, and then they'll have to create the URL by knowing this directory URL with the name and everything. So now back to our journal entry. The first thing we're going to do is load the photos that are already there. With the photo names, we're going to map them. Each of those, we're going to get them and we're going to get the URL from our photo service for that we need to add dependencies here. For those of you familiar with previous videos, what I do is I create a special initializer with the dependencies. Now let's, we can merge these two. So we have the dependencies. And here we have our photo service. This makes it easy if you want to do unit tests. Notice that I'm using the protocol initializing and assigning it with the adapter. In our test, we just use this initializer without the default value and we insert a dependency with a mock service here. So there we have all of the URLs. We want to retrieve the data from these URLs and then create images. UI image has a method that creates a, a UI image from data. Image doesn't. That's why we are passing in the. That's why we're passing UI images, and then in the view we can transform image the UI image into an image with this initializer. Mm -hmm. The image we have the images and here we transform our photo state from loading to content with the images this is very wrong you'll see why it's not like i'm gonna crash the app but you will see the effect of us doing this like this and for now in our initializer is where we will load the photos So our view model is we're going to do it in the main actor since we want our uh, methods to be executed on the main thread. Yeah, this should be good for now. We can at least run the app and see our photo speaker. Create one of this. Open. Here we have journal entry. Here we have our photos. We can add some padding. But once we click here, we get this display. We didn't ever specify permissions. Notice the terminal. There's no errors here. Let's click one, two, and nothing happens, but we are good to go. Nothing crashed. We're good. 
How do we know that we get something selected through this selected photo? This is the binding one that we pass to the photo speaker. In our did set, that's when we can uh, save our photos. Since we're gonna be saving them, it's gonna take time. It's something that's gonna do async. So the first thing that we're gonna do is set our state to loading, and then we're gonna save our photos. Now, this one, because it takes time, we don't wanna clutter the main thread with our operation. So we're gonna create a method, an async method that will save our photos. I don't need to pass in the parameter because they're already here in the selected photos variable. Okay, so now we have this, we are calling save photos and we can call it. Now, first of all, how are we going to get the data to call our method? So let's first see our dependencies, right? We have our photo service and we have save image data with name. That's the first thing we want to do. We want to save the image and then when the image is successful, we know if it's successful because we can throw, then we can add it to our journal. And at the end, we can save the journal. We need to update it, right? So let's, first of all, we also need our journal service. How are we going to get the data? Let's first do saving one single photo. And what do we have? We have selected photos. It's a photo speaker item array. So we're going to pass one by one this photo speaker item. And how can we do it? What can we do with this photo item? Let's see. We can load transferable. We can ask this load transferable to pass us the data. And in this completion handler is where we do everything. Now, this is an async method. Why? Well, we're already in, in an, another async one ourselves. This is a, it has a completion handler, right? How can we await for that? With a check at continuation. We are actually awaiting the check at continuation. And whenever this completion handler is done, that's when we call the continuation and that's how this await knows that it can resume. We're gonna have a result here that's gonna come. So if it is a success, we retrieve the data and we want our continuation to resume. Returning nil. We'll see later what we're going to do here. And if we're successful, we now have the data, right? So now we can save the name. So what's going to be the name? It's just going to be a random UUID. If all of this work, we're going to return the photo name, we do not return here, we resume our continuation, returning this photo name. And if we get an error, we also need to continue, we need to resume our continuation, every single scenario needs to resume the continuation or else, well, this will be stuck and actually the compiler will not let you finish. And let's, also, yeah, let's print it. Now, all of these returns, we need to actually store them in a variable. And I, oh yeah, this data can actually be, can be a success, but the data may be empty. So let's add it to the card. And with this, we're good. We have our load transferable. Now, what will happen later? We, now in our safe photos, what are we going to do? So we need to execute this async a bunch of times. We cannot do that with continuation. We cannot do that with tasks since we need to, we don't want to do it one by one. We want all of them to execute um, concurrently. That one, we can do it with another method, which is wait with task group. So for now, let's do void that self.
we'll go ahead and add a task. We'll get the photo name each time. Okay, then if we have the name, then we can add it. Now let's add an array for this. And let's append the name. If no photo was saved, then what do I care? Now, look at this error again. We're mutating names in a concurrently executing code. Well, what does this mean? Is that this group, each task will execute concurrently as many of them as can be executed at the same time. Meaning a bunch of stuff is going to be reading and writing to these names. All right. So we need to we need to make this better. We need to make it safe to be executed here. Uh, we're actually getting here a notification. Had I been running in Swift 6, this would have been an error. So what can I do for this? Actors. Let's create one here. We're gonna make it generic since we're gonna use it more than once. And this, instead of being an array, it's going to be an actor. You see, we need to remember the actor is the one that controls the access to this data. So every method that it has, we have to await so it can interact with the data. It's going to do that for every single photo item. So it's going to try saving, we get the name, and it's added to our actor. After every single item is finished in this group, we'll continue he the execution. We'll continue here. We can get all of the names from the actor. Again, we, out we need to await. Maybe someone else is also querying this data. And then we'll add them to our journal. bar we're going to be mutating it and one more thing in our journal we're already taking care of guarding if the journal already exists we are updating it if now we create a new journal uh, this will work except for this you'll see what happens here it's technically going to work but it's not going to look pretty we're still missing one more thing but let's just see what happens when we do this so let's add photos one, two, three, add. Loading here. Oh, did I never? Yeah. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, I'm missing in. I missed updating the state with the new photos. But if I go back, go back in. Here are the photos. And did you see what happened? There's a brief pause. Yeah, it's it's not the bad experience. That's because it's loading all of it's trying to load all of this data from the url but it's doing it in the main queue and that's where we get the uh, yeah and it, we're not even sure our loading state so we need to fix that okay so the first thing is here we're gonna load our photos that's what was making um this is what we were missing that's why the photos were not being we're gonna wait because this is going to become easy that's one of the improvements we need to go this cannot run in the main queue Now, how can we make this async? We will use again task group and actors. So we have our photos names that we do need it. We have our images actor. And we will await a task group. Okay, and we're not gonna be doing anything there except adding everything to our actor.
here in our group we're gonna add what we're doing here Okay, we add it to our actor after the group executes. Get our images from the images actor by waiting. Let's run and see how it looks. Noting we didn't get anything. Notice we did have our loading animation. Let's add more photos. We didn't get a clunky thing. We could see everything was loading. We have our scroll view with each of our photos. We're not... That was all for today. Our app is now a little bit more powerful. We were it was very easy to use photo speaker to add new photos. We can without having to actually implement much of it we just create the photo speaker view and it does all of the heavy lifting for us we just need to deal with the photos that the user selected um i don't know for you for me this was actually a pretty good review on actors task groups and continuations so yeah hopefully this was also an enriching experience for you as well hope you like this bye